Poker Genius with Dr. Stephen Simpson. Hi, welcome to the Poker Genius podcast channel, and my name is Dr. Steve Simpson. Just to remind you, we left the last episode mentioning Lee Davy, who is a very respected poker player and also an extremely respected journalist who uh, has his own blog and it's called pokerupdate.com. And he wrote an article about the work that uh, Chris Mormon and I had done together, culminating in him winning his first major. So I'll just read a, an extract from that. I've interviewed a lot of poker players and invariably I'm thrusting a camera into their face just after they've won something. My most common questions are, what are you doing differently? Where did this string of results come from? The generic response is, it's just variance. But is it really just variance? When Chris Mormon finally got that £300 griller off his back by winning the World Poker Tour LA Poker Classic, was it variance or was it something else? I think it was something else. Three weeks prior to Mormon's victory, Dr. Stephen Simpson flew out to Vancouver, Canada, to start a series of sessions with the world's most successful online tournament player in the history of the game. Three weeks later, Mormon won a million dollars in that LA tournament. Well, that's just part of the article, and certainly the word variance is is probably the most used word in in poker, because it it basically means it's just statistical scatter. It's, It's just a random event, not due to skill. Um, just happens. Anyway, whether it's variance or not, this long overdue maiden victory in a live event made a huge difference for Chris. I didn't realise it at the time, but this achievement would also make a huge change in my life. The beautiful game of poker. Well, poker certainly is a beautiful game and also an extremely popular one. I've been surprised by how many people talk to me about poker, how many people watch it on TV, and how many people dream of being a poker star too. Is the attraction the money, the exotic travel, or perhaps the fantasy of being a bit of a rebel? For many players, poker is a recreational hobby that costs them little if any money to play. For others, poker is a part-time job they engage in online to supplement their income. Hopefully, any losses can be covered by their day jobs and any damage is done to the player's dented pride more than to their bank account. But for a minority of players, poker is a full-time occupation that involves long hours, very long hours, and much travel, often seven days a week. Now, irrespective of where you fit on this spectrum, you owe it to yourself to give yourself the best chance of winning more than your share of hands and achieving all the fame and fortunes that just might follow if you're very, very lucky. More about Chris Mormon. He's a professional player, as you know, and um, far from being rebellious, he has a background that's conventional enough. Uh, funnily enough, actually, when I wrote that, um, I hadn't read his autobiography and he sent me the final draft to read. He's written two books so far. One's very much about the strategy of poker and the other is about him. And um, I was reading it on a flight uh, going to Portugal from what I remember. And I read one bit that just made me laugh so much. He studied economics at university and during the final year, um, he got really hooked into poker and he really and he was pretty good at it and he won a lot of money and so he uh, was living off his uh, his grant but not doing any studying and um, and obviously didn't get his degree and worse still the bit that made me laugh is um, he didn't tell his parents so his mum of course was incredibly proud of him and said well when's the degree ceremony going to be and he made all kinds of excuses like they weren't having one that year or he wasn't sure and and so it went on and on but you know mother was determined as just as determined as Chris is So she pinned it down and said, well, at least can I see your degree certificate? So that um, was a bit of a gut shot for Chris. And he resolved the problem by having a degree certificate um, printed. He, he He basically made one up. After I'd read the draft, he called me and uh, he said, what do you think about the book? And I said, I think it's really good. It's a fantastic read. And it tells the reader a lot about you. 
and um, some of your, the unconventional streaks. He said, well, look, I, I need some help. I'm really in a tight spot. I said, well, what is it? And he said, well, uh, the book's being published tomorrow and uh, I still haven't told my parents that I didn't get them a degree. <laughs> and I burst out laughing and Chris said, well, you know, that's not very funny. I said, no, it's not. I said, and I'm, I'm not sure that I, I can give you any advice, but I would just say, you know, these things blow over and uh, heck, you've won, you know, millions of dollars of money already and your parents probably you know, fully recognize you did, you did the right thing in your own way. I said, if anything, I'd, I'd just phone him up and tell him the truth. He said, oh, that's going to be a tough one. I said, yeah, well, you know, life is tough. Sometimes you just have to suck it up. So anyway, he did. Uh, he had to do his explaining and eat his humble pie, um, but he got away with it. Anyway, that's an aside. I just thought you might, that's made me, made me laugh. Um, so I'll get back to what I wrote, you know, when I wrote this book, Poker Genius. It, it just taking this poker up at university. Anyway, from the age of 11, there were hints of what was to come, because it was then that he found Bridge, for instance, and he was a good enough to captain England. He was pretty good at pool too, and still is, and he captained his university team and won the National University Championship. While at Essex University, he also discovered playing poker was a lot more fun than studying economics. Well, there's a surprise, and much more profitable too. Mormon was born in July 1985 and um, has already won millions at the tables and online. Indeed, is the first player to have broken the 13 million barrier in online events. And last time I checked, I think he was up to 19 and a half million. It's abundantly clear that life as a professional poker player is a tough one. It involves long, unsocial hours, long losing runs, and uh, lots of stress. So what's the attraction? Fame and fortune are obvious attractions, as is the exotic travel while on tour with uh, fun-loving friends. What else drives players to this sport to the exclusion of most other activities? Could it be that they're obsessed with playing poker? or even addicted to it. Mormon knows this could be true and offers some extremely valuable cautionary words. And he says, yes, poker can be very addictive, but you have to realize that it's just a game and not let it take over your life. If you're playing online, you can set yourself weekly or daily deposit limits. And it's wise to practice good bankroll management so that you don't end up losing money you can't afford to lose. Well, uh, please don't ignore this critical advice from Chris because there are some people who get, do get a problem and uh, please don't let that be you. It should guide you on every step throughout your poker career. If this is difficult, then seek help. The earlier, the better. As mentioned previously, um, poker player and journalist Lee Davey has interviewed me on several occasions in another article. It was called The Stephen Simpson School of Making Your Own Luck in Poker. He related our conversation about the importance of luck that I'd had with him previously. So here is Lee's words. There's an old saying that people make their own luck, and I believe that's true to a certain extent, said Dr. Simpson. People who tend to have a great outlook on life tend to believe they're luckier than the average person, and this is true when placed under the microscope of scientific study. So is Simpson saying that luck is controlled by the way the poker player feels? Well, it seems rather simplistic, but to a large degree, yes, that's true. If you have a more positive outlook on life, have more friends, a strong network, see opportunities, and have the confidence to try things that take you out of your comfort zone, then yes, you'll have the best chance of creating your own luck. And finally, it all makes sense. Because Dr. Simpson's talking about the ingredients that formulate a streak of winning results known as a heater. Everyone in poker understands this word. It's a run of results that sees all the stars align producing a long winning streak. And that was what Lee wrote. And my question is, is your heater switched on at the moment? Well, if not, where's it hiding? The heater never goes away. It just sometimes hides in a dark corner. I've discovered the beauty of poker, and I play online poker mainly for money and uh, thoroughly enjoy it. I f even find it relaxing. It's my chill time in the evening for uh, we watch Netflix or something. My dream is to play in a big live event 
and I'm inching closer to it every day. The thing that's stopping me is actually I'm not a very patient person and a big live event, you know, going on for three, four or five days, 12 hours a day, that would be a stretch. However, fortunately for me, I've got skills in other areas and I use these skills in my role as a mind coach, which is my first love. My clients, as I mentioned, include some of the world's elite poker players and and from other sports and business as well. They think they share in common. They know the value of maximizing every possible edge and that includes developing their mental game. So do as they do. There's a good hint for anything in life. Do as they do. Study the experts. Develop your mind skills to give yourself the best chance at finding the elusive heater switch that Davy described. We'll end there, and um, these are kind of great theories, but I guess what you're thinking, and you're right to think this, do they work in real life? Did they work for you, Steve? And will they work for me? Well, in the next episode... Um, I'm going to answer this question and I've got some pretty convincing statistics and facts to back them up. So in the meantime, look after your heater. Uh, Don't worry about the electricity bill because this heater's for free. Enjoy. Goodbye for now. Like, follow, subscribe. It's free. Leave a rating on Spotify or a review on Apple Podcasts. For more, Go to Dr. with a DR, Stephen with a PH Simpson.com. Dr. Stephen Simpson.com.